Hello, welcome, Cabbage here. In New Reincarnation, let's talk about the end of the main story of Sun and Moon with Hina and Yuzuki. I think the conclusion of this story was surprising to a lot of people. And so actually, this video is going to be more uh, just to open up the, uh, the comments for uh, people to say what they want to say. I'm interested to hear what uh, reactions people had. And then if you have not gone through the game and then seen this screen, where there are three choices for the ending, uh, then I recommend to uh, go back into the map, play that very last part again, and then uh, choose something different until you've seen all of the endings. And then in this video, I'll talk about sort of more kind of top line uh, reactions for me. Uh, but in the future, I want to do a video kind of thinking about what is the cage, uh, because we did get some more hints uh, with this ending. And then also talk about the uh, the trailer, which appears after these uh, series of endings. Think about what might be coming next, and if Hina and Yuzuki will be in there at all. I think part of why the ending was uh, so surprising for so many people is because maybe Hina and Yuzuki, uh, for the majority of the story, just kind of felt like uh, average, or maybe didn't leave much of an impression. I think that was on purpose. These two are kind of like the, uh, the everyman of uh, Japanese youth. And also for that reason, I think that is why they made Papa and uh, Black Mama so kind of over the top and fun. And by the way, I know a lot of people, uh, they don't like Papa. They think he is a perv. But I don't get that impression, and I know that it's going to make me look terrible. <laughs> but I see it more as like, uh, kind of like a shunned father that is just wanting some affection from his kid. This is also something that's kind of a um, kind of a cultural trope here in Japan. But like we all have, you know, very deep connections to our mothers. We all grew up inside of them for Pete's sake, while our fathers are just a guy that lives in our house. And so like young children, you know, uh, rejecting their fathers, preferring their mothers. I think that's pretty common. And so to see the uh, kind of the change in Hina over time, where uh, towards the end of the arc, she more accepts uh, Papa. That was heartwarming to see. Also, I am biased because I really, really like the uh, voice performance of Papa in the Japanese. And then I'll play some uh, parts uh, that the uh, voice actor read during a live stream. And then I just want people to uh, enjoy his very calming, soothing voice. Taiyo <laughs> Yeah, so good. <laughs> they do a really good job of all the uh, voice actors for New Reincarnation. But anyone that is uh, familiar with either Japanese life or uh, Japanese pulp culture should uh, see, you know, Yuzuki and Hina's lives as something familiar. Hina's the uh, classic star overachiever that wears a mask over her own sadness, while Yuzuki is the classic emotionally distant loner that sacrifices his youth for the future. They are both uh, kind of beholden to the uh, pressures of society, uh, the pressure to succeed, especially uh, within school life, and pretty much every Japanese person can uh, relate to this. The, uh, the two story arcs are also showing that uh, even with, you know, success in achieving, that doesn't guarantee uh, your wish gets granted or it doesn't guarantee happiness. And then a lot of times I hear of Japanese folks, you know, they, uh, they can achieve, but what they're doing is that they're living and they're choosing according to uh, what someone else tells them. Uh, whether it's a, a parent, or it's their school, or their business. And then if they ever find themselves in a situation where there is not that guidance, then they don't know what to do with themselves. 
their meaning in life was to fulfill other people's uh, expectations or desires. And there's no time kind of spent cultivating what people want for themselves. And so that too, I think, uh, people can relate to. Also, I see a lot of uh, hate for uh, their father, Hino's father, for being kind of a, a useless lump. But anyone who is uh, familiar with uh, depression maybe uh, understands what that man is going through. But yeah, both uh, Hina and Yuzuki, they, uh, they find that uh, their, what they're aiming for, their goal, uh, gets shattered. In the case of Yuzuki, his mother dies before he can, you know, save her. And then in the case of Hina, all of the work that she put in to uh, make a good future for herself so that she could support her father, that was lost as well. And so both of them are in the uh, depths of despair. And then they kill the other side, the other parent side. This too is maybe one of the more uh, shocking parts about the ending. <laughs> but I have to wonder if they actually did it, because that's pretty drastic. I have to wonder if it was like a daydream or like an implanted memory or something. And that's something that I'm looking forward to uh, in the future. Because with this ending, actually, uh, Hina and Yuzuki's story is not resolved. Uh, they're still there in the cage together. They didn't uh, disappear. They didn't, uh, you know, disintegrate and then reform as a weapon with a, a weapon story. So I think their story is going to continue. And I think that's all I will have to say here. Uh, any more that I would say maybe would be uh, better covered in a video where I talk about the, uh, the nature of the cage, uh, how it works, and then what it is for. Okay, but feel free to comment about anything about the uh, ending, including uh, other games. Uh, again, if you have any future knowledge, like from uh, data mines, then uh, please leave that out. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you again. Take care.